Page 273? Yeah. All right, shall we start at the beginning there? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think like for this, for A, when it says based on these results, what's the possible source of the ammonia? We know that it could have been from, ask, could have really been acid. Right. Right. And then B says, now Or it could have been from an emendated C terminus, right? That's true. Oh, is, it, is that the answer he gave? No, he just put, is this 273? Yeah, he said it could be an animate on, on the C. Right, so, so there's two possible sources. So animated C channels or, okay. Okay, good. And then for B, reaction test seven excess for the following results. So what do we know? So we should be looking for as for acid. Mm -hmm. So we see that the O minus was deprotonated. Um, what does ASP look like again? So if the ASP here is deprotonated, then we know that it was originally ASP. True. That's very good. That's the key. Okay. So how does that help us? What's the answer to part B? Just it's an explanation thing. Oh. So we oh. can just say that, just that it's... And then that, that means the Remember that we're trying to use this to figure out the structure of the, the peptide. So you've done good so far, you just have to spell out no, what see, that No, see, that's not what he says. He says, since the side chain of ASP was not labeled with NH2 and H2, the NH4 plus in part A must be coming from the carboxy terminus. Right, that was that next thing that I was trying to get you to say oh. that you hadn't said yet. So remember that in part A, oh. we had ammonia. Based on part A, we saw ammonia. So we deduced from that that the original peptide either had asparagine or an amidated C terminus. Now though, with part B, from part B we know that it didn't have asparagine. Instead it had aspartic acid. Okay. Now that's what you said. What you said, it had aspartic acid, and then what you had to say next was, therefore I deduce that it did have the amidated C terminus. This is the detective aspect. You have to put the various clues together. We have to put together what we just discovered from part B with our two possibilities. So many of these parts will say, in many of these cases, you'll have to have more than one answer. So from part A, there was two possible sources. But whenever you have two possibilities, you have to be saying, gee, I better look out for clues in the remaining parts that will allow me to narrow down those possibilities. We shouldn't be satisfied with two possibilities. Usually later on, he's going to give us extra clues that allow us to narrow that down. So even though from part A we had two possibilities, now from part B we know that one of the possibilities is ruled out. So we know that in fact there was an amidated C terminus. Okay, okay, let's keep going. So that's why he puts NH2 on all the answers after. Whoa, wait, what? It's okay, you got it. Just the connections at the bottom can be NH2 everywhere in the answer key. Because you just deduced that C carb the C carboxyan has NH2. Oh, but that's not the last thing in here. Just look at the answer key. Yeah, no, I'm not. I'm just saying, like, this is, okay. Okay, so we're moving on. Okay, so reaction with excess gates of chloride followed by total acid hydrolysis. Okay, so we put what we know. So the only thing we know is that it's asked at the C terminus. Right? Yeah. You don't have asked. Didn't we just deduce that we have? No, we did. We just deduced that we do have ASP. Yeah, but not necessarily at the C terminus. Right. Yeah. Really? Why not? What's, we, it, we absolutely did, didn't we? Because if hydrazine mm -hmm. took off the H, remember the O minus thing tells us that it's at the C terminus. Well, remember, who does hydrazine um, not attack? Hydrazine doesn't attack C terminuses, but it also doesn't attack aspartic acid side chains. Those are two separate things it doesn't attack. So. So yeah, just because, so um, in fact, we know, well, let's take a look at this here. The whole point is if aspartic acid was on the C terminus, then we'd get NH4 plus then at the end. It wouldn't be, you just deduced here that you have NH2 at the very right. So you can't have aspartic acid because the whole point is you just deduce 
that you created any, you created it because of your. No, but you can still have ASP, can't you? No. So I think it's over in the second time. You have ASP, but it started from ASP, it didn't start from ASN, so therefore why would it, it wouldn't be a public thing, right? It's extremely confusing. Why? I just don't understand why it wouldn't be on the very early page. Okay. Right, so part B, normally hydrazine tells us who the C-terminus is, right? But in this case, all the amino acids got attacked by hydrazine. So we're not going to be able to tell who the C-terminus is. Except for the one with the O minus on it. That's right, but that's only the side chain that didn't get attacked. Usually it's the carboxy carbon that doesn't get attacked. Let's put it another way, isn't what we just deduced, didn't we deduce yeah. that the carboxy terminus, terminus was amidated, right? Yeah. We deduced that the carboxy terminus is amidated, that means it should also be attacked by hydrazine. In this case, the hydrazine is going to attack all the carboxy carbons. So what this looks like here is. So then why doesn't he put NH2 in the very last space? If that's the C-terminus? Right. Don't we usually put the C-terminus? Or wait, what, why is the C-terminus in the very last? Right. Put this to the right yeah. space? That so seems that right. makes no sense. He writes it in. I don't know. He actually did do that on the next page if you look at the answer key. He does do that. No, he writes it to the right of everything else. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So that shows that the C terminus is amidated. So That's we'll never notation. put it on a spot? I think That's right. We'll never put it on a spot. The notation for showing that the C terminus is amidated is exactly the notation he was using. But then what is that, what would have been the C terminus? We don't know yet. That's why he hasn't put anything in this blank yet to show that we haven't figured out what so that is. So this isn't yet. the C terminus anymore? It is the C terminus. But I thought C terminus was. It's just not a spare. Okay. It's a amidated C terminus. We don't know what it is. What's the molecule? I think we need to go through it or else it won't make sense. So to try to clarify these ideas, Let's imagine that the aspartic acid is not at the C-terminus. We don't know for sure that it isn't, but let's imagine it wasn't at the C-terminus. So I'm going to put the aspartic acid here in the middle of the molecule. Okay, so here's the aspartic acid. What's it attached to? Well, on this side it's attached to a amino acid, and on this side it's attached to some other unspecified amino acid. How is it attached? He's just trying to show you. Know, well, I could draw in another amino acid, so I could draw. So here's an aspartic acid that's attached on the left-hand side to an unspecified amino acid and attached on the right-hand side to an unspecified amino acid. I just want to give an example of what happens when you treat aspartic acid with hydrazine. Okay. So let's see what happens when we treat aspartic acid with hydrazine. Well, when we treat it with hydrazine, the first thing that will happen is this will turn into an O-. And the hydrazine will attack this bond. Do you agree that the hydrazine would attack this bond? And therefore, and it'll attack these bonds too. But let's focus especially on what happens to the aspartic acid. So when it attacks this bond, So the hydrazine is going to cleave this bond and cleave this bond, as well as other bonds I haven't drawn. So we can see that the hydrazine, after the aspartic acid gets attacked by the hydrazine, it will look like this. Now, if we take a look at part B, this is what we actually saw in part B. This is what the aspartic acid looked like in part B. Yeah. It was deprotonated, and it looked like it had been attacked by hydrazine. But doesn't this, so the thing that was confusing you, it seemed like, is you thought, gee, this has to be the C-terminus. Yeah. But now we can see, no, it doesn't have to be, even if it was internal, it would still look like this. Even if it was what? Even if this was internal, 
even if it was not the C terminus, it would still look like this after it gets attacked by hydrazine. After the aspartic acid gets attacked by hydrazine, it looks like this. 